Welcome to Sitcom Showdown, a podcast that reviews classic sitcom episodes and inducts them into our very own Hall of Fame. As usual, one of us has chosen a sitcom episode and the other guy has no idea what it's going to be. Will they already know it? Will they love it? Can they be convinced that it's worthy? Let's find out on the Sitcom Showdown. Welcome back to Sitcom Showdown. It's Jeff is here for episode 41. And hi, Steve. Hi, Jeff. Hey. And hello, listeners. Uh, exactly. Uh, so it's your turn. Yay. Sandwiched in between the Halloween month and the Christmas month, we have a November normality. Uh, what have uh, you brought to the table? It's, well, it's better than normality. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, I'm shooting for the stars. Um, well, Jeff, you know I appreciate your point of view on things. Right. And uh, you gave me some, some feedback in the last couple of... my last couple of choices. Uh, you felt that the main character in those... Uh, which was Gary from Final Space and Jake from Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yes, you felt they were a bit, bit over the top. Is that? Yeah, is that a right? bit over the top and and lacking in actual character. And you said something along the lines of, they were pulling their lines out of the random smart, <laughs> random smart-ass, smart-ass generator. Generator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's fair to say that um, I had mixed results with those couple of choices. Right. So this month. I've gone for uh, someone who's a bit more down to earth, um, though. He's not Marvin, a, the paranoid no, android. No, or no like that. not Marvin. Although he is a musical genius, Jeff. Um, having penned masterpieces such as "Life Is Like a Salad Bar." Oh, really? Yep. Oh man, can you guess who it is? I can guess who it is. Uh, I, I haven't got it. It's John, isn't it? John Shuttleworth. Yeah, that's the dude. Oh, cool. Sheffield's finest. Ah, oh, yes. Right. So yep, this yep. is um, the Shuttleworths. Is the name of the sitcom. What? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were going to watch Count Arthur. I was getting all excited. No. All right. No, we're not. Um, but it's still good. It's um, This was actually on BBC Radio 4. Okay. Yes, it's our first radio oh, sitcom. wow. I've always wanted to do one of these on mm. Sitcom Showdown. Yeah. Well, this is it. All right. Um, obviously from the UK. And they've done five seasons of this from 93 to 2010. Whoa. With a few specials in between as well. Uh, but the one that we're doing tonight is from season four. Right. And uh, it's called Every Cloud Has a Silver Wedding. And the reason for that will become apparent okay. as we go on. Um, I wonder what we're going to do for cover art this episode. Yeah. <sighs> Interesting, isn't it? It's just going to be a blank. A big picture of John. A blank space, yeah. With his spectacles. Exactly. So, the Graham Fellows... Mm. Stars as John Shuttleworth and every other character oh. in this sitcom. Yeah, way. Um, so he, he's just done that purely so he can collect six fees. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. If that's the reason. I guess it makes life a lot easier. Yeah. One thing you might not know about Graham is that in 1978, he wrote a novelty record called Jilted John, which mm. went to number four in the UK. Yeah. Oh, you know that? Yeah, because when I was uh, looking into his character... Mm. Uh, because when I watched Count Arthur, with that special episode, mm. I thought, I recognised this guy, and I recognised him as oh, really? the St. John's Ambulance guy from an episode of one of my favourite sitcoms, Time Gentleman, Please. Mm. And he's a very distinctive actor. And I thought, wow, that's that guy. And then I had to look up who that guy was. And then that took me down the rabbit hole of the whole um, Jilted John record and, and right. all these things. So that was amazing. So you've been down the YouTube rabbit hole? Yes. Oh. No, but you know I, all this already then. Yeah, but the listener doesn't know. The listener doesn't know. Well, John, uh, John, <laughs> Graham was a drama student at the time he did that record. Um, he created the character of John Shuttleworth later in 1986. Uh, and he's done a bunch of other things, including the one that you just you just referenced there. Uh, so the character of John Shuttleworth, he's a slightly fearful homebody, though he does like the occasional trip to the garden centre. Uh, he's so also a very normal man. Yes, very down to earth, like I was saying. He, but he is an aspiring musical artist. Uh, he often misses or is unaware of things that are going on around him. Oh, right. Which can lead to some fun situations. Uh, other characters that pop up. In this sitcom are Ken Worthington, who is John's neighbour and sole agent. Oh. Mary, John's wife, who struggles at times to be patient with John. She can be a bit domineering sometimes and prefers activities that don't involve John. Oh. 
<laughs> Very good. And she she doesn't like slamming drawers from memory of the Count Arthur episode. Yeah. She's got to shut all the drawers quietly or something. Oh, uh, yes, sorry, I didn't yeah, mean her to nerves, interrupt. nerves are on edge or something like that. And then another character is Mary's friend, Joan Chitty. And Joan appears in this episode. Oh. Mm, so um, I actually came across this on my Twitter feed. It was a one of the, the Twitter accounts that follows sitcoms. Yeah. And they were basically saying how BBC had put out a whole load of stuff, content, on their radio page, including um, Shuttleworth. So right. I went along and I got hooked and binge binged basically all five seasons in space of about three or four days. Crikey. Because the episodes are about 15 minutes each, so yep. it's easily done. Ah. Mm. Uh, where do we get to? Oh, so have you, what, have you listened to any Shuttleworths, Jeff? Oh, yeah, a tiny bit. You a know, I, bit. I only had a little sample I came across. I can't remember anything about it. Mm. Oh, so you might have listened to some on YouTube, but not yeah. listened to the actual... Exactly, exactly. Out. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And this is another one where the format thing comes into play as well. Because I do remember when you said, when we're doing Penguins of Madagascar, because it's only a 15-minute mm. thing, will it count? Yep. Yeah. And it, I think it does. And, it was, you know, there's um, the other radio sitcom, You'll Have Had Your Tea, with Hamish and Dougal, which mm-hmm. is a spin-off of I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, which is, you know, Graham Garden and, and Barry Cryer and these sorts of people. Yep. And Hamish and Dougal's only a 15-minute audio sitcom. Mm. And that totally counts. Is mm. that is that the industry standard for a radio sitcom? On the Beeb, yeah, possibly so. I don't know. But then other ones are half an hour. Mm. So or what's the one you listen to with our friend um, Tom Rigglesworth? Yep, Cabin... So- Cabin pressure. Cabin pressure. So that that could be half an hour. And The Goons is could half be. an hour, and lots of other ones are half an hour. Mm, okay. Nebulous is half an hour. Have you come across Nebulous no. before? No. What's oh, that? it's a early 2000s pastiche of Doctor Who and Quatermass with Mark Gatiss in it and produced by Nicholas Briggs. Hmm, there you go. You know, you know much more about this stuff than I do. Oh, I wouldn't say so. No. Uh, all right, cool. Where are we at? Where are we at? Well, we're going to go and listen to it. Okay. We present the Shuttleworths in Every Cloud Has a Silver Wedding. Now, the sanding's complete. Let's begin painting. Um, I do realise I should first wipe down all paintable surfaces with a damp cloth. But there isn't time. So, loaded the brush, generously, but not excessively. Rose pink, same as before. Just taking a last fond look at the previous coat, applied in the early 80s, when me and Mary were still newlyweds. Shame to go over it, really. You can still see every brush stroke. It's like a moment frozen in time. It doesn't take much Just look and you will see The journey of a paintbrush See where the paint went To know the moods of the painter as he painted Hear the brush work sloppy Looks like he was in a rush Wife was getting stroppy Late for tea was he and he it seems he missed a bit Distracted by a DJ's quip On his little tranny It doesn't take much Just look and you will see The journey of a paintbrush And we're back <laughs> I was about to say the exact same thing We've just listened to Every Cloud Has a Silver Wedding Yeah yes, Jeff knows what that's all about now Yeah. Well we find John at the start of this episode, preparing a window, well, not just any window, but his bedroom window for painting. And I thought I'd choose this episode, Jeff, because you've been doing a lot of painting lately. That's true. You can totally relate to oh, yeah. the agonies oh. of sandpaper and yeah, the, all these sorts of things. And he does mention the different grits. I'm thinking, was it 120? <laughs> was it 180? <laughs> all those sorts of things. Yes, all these co- sorts of considerations. Ah, yeah. Mm. Um, after a monologue from John about sandpaper grades and the correct order in which to apply them, we discover that it's his and Mary's silver wedding anniversary tomorrow, which is 25 years. 
Um, and he thinks it would be a nice surprise for her to wake up and see that their bedroom window frame has been painted. It's a reasonable thought, I, I think, isn't it, Jeff? I don't know. Do you think you'd give anything so mundane on the occasion of your 25th wedding anniversary, or would you step up a little bit more? <laughs> trying to get you excited about it. Um, oh, I'm excited. Uh, anyway, uh, so while she's out at step class, intermediate division, she's just moved up into the intermediate division, uh, which is exciting as well. It's a, it's a big week in the Shuttleworth household. Oh, yeah. Uh, so while she's off at the step class, he started the job. And he's arranged for Joan Chitty, her friend, which we mentioned previously, to keep Mary occupied after the class until the job's done. So the plan is John's going to send her a message to let her know, and then they'll come, they'll pop back, and everything will be sorted. Uh, then, so that's all very exciting. And then we stop for a song, which is called "Journey of a Paintbrush," which is John's musing musings about the previous coat of rose pink, which was applied in the early nineteen eighties. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's quality songwriting, if nothing yeah. else. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I'm glad you agree. Um, the doorbell rings to interrupt the song, and Joan is at the door. <gasps> That's got to throw a spanner into the plan. What's, yeah, what's going on there? Uh, so she was at step class. This is her version of events. She was at step class, but she found intermediate too hard, and she got upset, went to the bar to have a few drinks, and then she panicked decided the best thing to do was to come around and help John paint the window frame. Right. Yeah. So if she can't be useful, distracting, then she'd better at least help out. Yeah. Okay. Um, don't I'm know what you. her painting's like after she's had a few drinks, but oh, we'll find I out. I thought about find that. Out in a minute. Oh, blimey. Um, John asks her if she's any good with a paintbrush, and Joan insists that she is. She painted her whole house after her, her late husband passed away. Oh. She says, take me upstairs and let's do it. <laughs> but after they go upstairs and John checks her technique, he soon finds she's overloading her brush, Jeff. No, oh, you can't have that. No. You've got to wipe one side off and the other side, but not all of them. Exactly. It's dripping everywhere, so no. uh, she has to take her coat off. No. And well, John... to, what is this to avoid getting splashes of paint on her nice coat? Is exactly. this the pretext? All right, okay. Exactly. Um, but John says, come away from the window, Joan. Um, you didn't tell me you just had your leotard on underneath. So he's a bit concerned that this could be misconstrued by anyone walking down the street because, of course, the the curtains are thrown back while they're doing the... The painting of the window. The painting right? of the windows. Oh. Um, so we can't have that. And so um, uh, she agrees to put a T-shirt on. And she brings out a bottle of champagne, which she's bought um, for John and Mary to celebrate the special occasion the next day. Oh, very nice. Mm. And uh, Joan says, are you looking forward to the next 25 years, John? Are you still in love with Mary? And he um, he insists that he is. And he says, sure, we have our fallouts. And um, just this morning uh, was an example because um, he found that there were two margarines open. He couldn't uh, find the margarine, so he, he opened, opened a, fresh, a one. fresh one. And then discovered there was already an oh. open one in the fridge. <laughs> and uh, so she insists that this this isn't a problem, but he's, he's not having a bar of it, is he? No, it could throw the whole household into chaos. Exactly. So I'm gonna we're gonna break here, and I'm gonna make force Jeff to listen to a song <laughs> that John wrote okay. on this very subject. Shall we include two margarines live? I think for the for the listeners. Oh, can we, we do that? We might be able to hear it coming through the speakers if we if we crank it. Okay, here we go. Prepare oneself. John Shuttleworth sings two margarines. <laughs> Been to Clapper's Gate. So put me off. Two margarines on the go. It's a nightmare scenario. Two margarines in my life. Two margarines to put on my knife. Two margarines, but which one should I use to put on my scone? It's a dilemma, second to none. And to her. Two margarines on the go, it's a nightmare scenario. Two margarines in my life, doesn't seem to bother my wife. She's the one who ignored the first and opened the second, which began the curse of the two margarines. Is there anything worse? Oh, possibly. I can't think of it at the moment. Two 
margarines on the go It's a nightmare scenario Two margarines in my fridge It's enough to end a happy marriage Two margarines, how I long For the day when there's only one My wife says you're a lunatic, John But two margarines Oh, it's like a bad dream We've all been there. Wow. It's just the, and I know we should get to this later, but I'm just impressed of the consistency over the whole career of this character that he's still using the same keyboard sounds yeah. in Count yeah. Arthur decades later. It's amazing. <laughs> oh. I tell you, that just cracks me up. I don't know if that was meant to go into this, whether the song came first or the, the mention of this came into the sitcom. But anyway, I don't want to digress on that too much, but I just. I loved it. Any comment from you? You're just shaking your head over there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Joan asks uh, John, have you never been tempted to stray from Mary? And he says, Whoa. well, there was one occasion where when I was a security guard at a sweet factory in the Rotherham area and he had attended a conference and he just happened to writ- have written a song about that. Because oh, it was at this point I thought they were sort of trying to move the plot in a certain direction. Yeah. But no, it was all a setup to squeeze another song another in. Another song. Two yeah. songs in this episode. Yeah. Uh, this one's called Unaccompanied Lady, and Joan actually talks John into playing it while she's painting. That's the deal. Um, so we don't slow the job down. And she joins in on the chorus. Uh, essentially, John confirms his commitment to the marriage in the song at the end. And at the end of the song, Mary's back. Oh. Oh, no. Uh, Joan's still in her leotard, having failed to put a T-shirt on, and she's ruined John's silver anniversary plan. And the painting's been substandard. Yeah, it's it's just all over the shop. Oh, no, it's all going wrong. Joan cunningly shuts the curtains in order to conceal both herself and her shoddy paint job. Yeah. So John's not unhappy about that, and he goes off to talk Mary into going through to the lounge um, because she comes home really, she's flogged after this. Intermediate step class. Oh. But he says, uh, um, go on, love. I've, I've plugged in the foot spa already, and uh, I've got some miniature heroes which I found in the pantry. Now, miniature heroes are our equivalent of a box of favourites, Jeff. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, in the same way that a, a penguin biscuit is a Tim Tam, I guess. Is it? Which is a, a revelation oh, I had. All sorts of cultural week. enlightenment going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Here. Have you ever heard the phrase, p- p- pick up a p- penguin and... Yeah, okay, okay. So there's biscuits over there in the UK, and presumably there's been some sort of catchphrase and advertising, Papa pick up a penguin. Mm. And I always wondered what they were. Um, And if anyone wants a sitcom connection to that, I think Leslie Ash from Men Behaving Badly might have advertised those. Anyhow, so I was in the supermarket. This is sounding like a John Shuttlesworth story (laughs) already. Shuttleworth. Um, We've got to do is set it to some yeah. <laughs> some, beats. some zappy music. Um, yeah, so I was in the British aisle of the super, well, the tiny section <laughs> of British stuff where you can get your Jaffa cakes. Yeah, and I saw lovely p- p- pick up a p- penguin. No way. And then I I felt the biscuits inside because I didn't want to rip it open, and it felt exactly like a Tim Tam. And I thought, aha, they're ripping off Tim Tams. There you go. Hmm. Wonder which one came first. <laughs> oh, Tim Tams, surely. We'll just mm. take the credit for Australia. Anyway, sorry. Uh, uh, where and, where um, are we? So in addition to the mon- miniature heroes, John says that he'll open a bottle of something special. So he goes back up upstairs, pulls the curtains back. Uh, the window's open. Mm. Joan has jumped out and she's left. So she's jumped onto the roof of the patio and then down from there to the ground. She's left a trail of pink footprints on the patio, like the, I guess the paving on the ground. And they're leading to Ken's house next door. And she, John can see she's at Ken's door with a bottle of champagne. Yeah, leaving him, you know, because he's already promised that to Mary. He's going to yeah. be in trouble. Very rude. Very rude. And that's the end of the episode. I think it all wraps up rather nicely. Yes. Glad you think so. Mm. I've got a bunch of notes. Okay. Most of which I cobbled together after four hours sleep last night, so they... Oh, dear. Okay. Hopefully they make sense. Yeah. Have you got anything you want to say before we jump into this? No. Nah. I'll just, you know, jump in when you are Um, Okay, well, let's start here. John's, the extent of John's romantic abilities, or whatever you want to call it, is uh, repainting the bedroom window frame. 
uh, rose pink, which is the same colour yeah. that he painted it while they were newlyweds 25 years ago. Um, yeah, and he yeah. even says, it's a shame to go over it, really. <laughs> I'm it's thinking just... Mary is going to wake up the next morning and not even notice. Yeah. That the window frames have been painted, right? Yeah, yeah. And he'll go, happy anniversary. Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> She'll go, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is what you were alluding to yeah. before. You've had 25 yeah. years to plan for this, man. And yeah, you can do the, better. The night before he's painting it. Yeah. Like, as soon as she comes in, she's going to smell that anyway and go, mm, what's that painty smell? Well, would, would it be oil-based, Jeff, or water-based? Oh, well, you definitely want to go for a, a glossy oil-based paint. Yeah, I would have thought so. She'd smell that a mile away. Yeah, exactly. Mm, doesn't bear It takes about. forever to dry, especially in British weather. Exactly. Even if the window's open. Yeah. The songs are always the highlight of an episode of The Shuttlesworth, and we've got two times the goodness in this episode. Oh, so uh, this, this is out of the ordinary? There's normally is, yeah, only one. A little bit out of the ordinary. Aha, uh -huh, okay. We've got Journey of a Paintbrush, which is a commentary on Joan's own, John's own 25-year-old brushwork. <laughs> um, it really is a very <laughs> good song. I genuinely think they're really well written. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're catchy. Yeah. They're very catchy tunes. And lyrically, and he's you know doing metaphors with the paintbrush and the lines in the stuff and how it represents life and all that stuff. Yeah, what I good. can't get my head around is he's in a rush. He's he's on a strict <laughs> timeline, but he stops to to write and record this song in the middle of the process. So, what's he thinking, Jeff? I don't know. You can't stop it, the muse when it the comes. The muse when it, yeah yeah. You just got to roll with it exactly. And then, um, egged on by Joan, he sings the, the second song, which is the Unaccompanied Lady mm. tune, um, which tells the story of him seeing Denise from the Derbyshire town of Bakewell. Yeah. <laughs> and he, while, well, he, <laughs> while he was at the conference for yeah. the security people. Yeah. And he trembled at her beauty as he saw her stoop to retrieve a packet of nuts that <laughs> she dropped on the floor. Oh, of course, he never gloriously gets... gloriously pedestrian. Yeah. He yeah. never gets as far as actually speaking to her, though. No. And this is okay. the great... Great tale of John's one great tale love. of unrequited love. Yeah. But as I said before, he curses himself for forgetting that he's a married man. So, <laughs> of course, it goes nowhere. Oh. So John's... Is that the B-side? Is that the B-side? That's the B-side to the paintbrush song thought... when you buy your single. No, surely that would be the A-side. Oh, it? okay. Well, fair enough. I well, could argue that for hours. Yeah, it could do. Um, so John's not completely clueless because he asks Joan to put a T-shirt on over her leotard. Right. Because he's worried about that. Uh, he's surprised to notice that although she can't get through the intermediate step class, she can clamber out of his first floor window no problem at all, yeah. even holding a bottle of champagne. Oh, yeah. Um, but he doesn't put two and two together and realise that she left the class under false pretenses um, to try and lure him upstairs for a bit of painting, That's... a sing-song, and a bit of romance. Yeah, see, this is uncertain, right? So we don't know that 100% well, for sure, but I think there's a pretty strong chance. It's heavily he implied. Can it. Yeah, well, exactly, because she's asking all these leading questions. Yeah, have you ever thought about... I think that's exactly what's going on, but, you know, we, you could give her benefit of the doubt. Mm. I wouldn't, but you could give her the benefit, <laughs> yeah. benefit of the doubt. I'm not giving giving you know, the benefit of the doubt. Why I've did she a, look, wait until whole, now? I've got a whole paragraph about this. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we the go. The character of Joan. Uh, so on the eve of John's silver wedding anniversary, she's trying to lead him astray. That's terrible. It is terrible. Terrible. And when that fails, she so doesn't think twice. She's off to Ken's house with the the bottle of champagne, champagne that he's she's brought around supposedly yeah. for John and Mary. Terrible. And uh, we all know Ken would prefer um, a Malibu. Well, at least at mid morning. Oh, really? Is this part of the series? Yeah. That, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, whenever John goes around mid morning. Yeah. He gets, Ken offers him a, a Malibu. That's very <laughs> Eddie Hitler, isn't he it? He politely declines. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Joan's a complete shocker. Yeah. All I've got left is my summary, Jeff, so All I'll right. put, put this down for Well, you. look, let's stay on that go? topic of the leisure centre, shall we? Now, I, this strikes me as something that Mr. Brutus would never allow. Have a bar. Having a leisure. bar at the leisure centre. Yeah, oh, look, I've just put in an hour on the treadmill. I'll have a couple of pints. Yep. What? Is this a normal thing, or is that put in there for comedy effect? But either way, it, it paints a, a word picture. Well, it's very much it's a, a sports club kind oh, of thing, isn't in it? In the old style, is it? Well, I'm, every time I think of Leisure Centre, I just think that Mr. Mm. Brittis has, and he, he'd never have a no, bar no, in his... It'd be a cafe that. with it. I've never seen a leisure complex with a bar. I thought I'm that on was board with that, yeah, that comment. Yeah, exactly. 
because uh, I was just laughing all the way through this. It's pretty action packed, and I'm wondering if that's because <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't. It, okay, that's the, that's utterly the wrong way to put it. Fair enough. Yeah, it wasn't action packed, but it was gag packed. Is that a, a, a result of the 15 minute format that you can just cram all your best stuff in and get in and get out? And well, it's pretty tight. Yeah. So I was worried about him having to do lots of other voices because that's where it can easily fall down if you don't have the talent but I wasn't too disappointed with what he was doing in that department mm. and I know I wasn't exposed to the full range of characters or anything but I listened to a lot of Goon Show and of course the master is Peter Sellers and he can literally do anything right he's he's a genius at that so I think he, it was on par it was pretty good mm. yeah so um, that was a, a relief I thought your eyebrows raised when Joan joined in on the chorus yeah ah oh. Because okay, when you when Were you've you got shocked? a song playing, yeah, when you've got a song playing, you think okay, so they've managed to crowbar this song into this episode, and then it brings you back into the room when Joan's singing along, mm. and you think, oh yeah, this is actually happening in real time while she's doing the painting and all that. And I just thought that was fantastic; it was brilliant. The squabble over the two margarines in the fridge. Yep. Talk about, you know, final space and me having nothing to relate to. I could totally relate to two margarines in the fridge because I've had that very discussion oh, really? with Jane many a time. Not many a time oh, yeah. specifically on margarine, but, you know, when it comes to the last tenth of the whatever it is, she'll yep. just crack open a new one and then I'm oh, stuck dear. with finishing off the dregs of whatever oh, dear, is left, oh, dear. which I don't have to do, but I shan't be putting it in the bin. That's wasting. Yep. yep. Anyhow. It's, um, it's one of those things where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Like, there's people at work who, if you throw the milk container out with a bit left in, mm -hmm. they'll complain about that. But then if you put it back with a bit left in it, there's other people oh, that are complaining yeah. that, look at this. Oh. Some clowns left just a, a millimetre of milk in the bottom. Yeah, so like half a splash, not even a splash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good point. You can't win. Anyway, now you can sing this song yeah. next time it happens at home. I will. Just what I like about this whole format, right, because I do like audio sitcoms, is that he's got the sound of the sandpaper while he's doing the talking and you can hear the sound of the paint tins being opened and mm. you can hear all the stuff and you can create any sort of world you like without regard to budget at all, which is brilliant. And so I just like what they did there. Just even from the opening lines of this thing, it must have been the opening paragraph. He goes, oh, I thought it would it'd be lovely for her to wake up and see the window had been painted. Well, what? <laughs> you just feel like grabbing John and saying, what are you doing, man? Uh, but it is, is tales of the everyday with your sandpaper and your step class and all this sort of stuff. I, I really like all that. Hyper-realistic. Mm. So I thought it was really good. It's it's the opposite of excitement and adventure. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, but he still manages to build up some tension, which is really cool. So that covers in-show stuff, right? Mm. But I've I've had some outside-the-show Thoughts. Yes, some other thoughts. Yes, yes. So the first thing that reminded me of when John comes on and he's getting very close to the microphone and he's talking like this and it's blah, 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 blah. So I've been hearing a bit recently, although it's been the last three or four years this craze has been going on, and I had to look it up, but it's ASMR. Have you come across mm, the ASMR? Nope. So this is uh, YouTube channels or other things that specialize in people with very calming voices talking very, very nicely and right up at the microphone and whispering into your ear. And apparently there's therapeutic benefits oh. to this and it just chills people out and they might put it on when they want to do whatever. If they were painting a window frame, you can put your ASMR on. So I looked it up and it's Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Mm. And it's supposed to chill you out. Um, and you, it was... You think you're suggesting that John pioneered the technique? Yep. So I might put a bit of... <laughs> <laughs> I might put a clip in no, or people... You're will... going to put the listeners to sleep. Yeah, no, okay. So he's beaten this by 15 years. Hmm. So he's absolutely way on trend. And also hmm. the other thing is, is the whole, his whole show, this whole, the Shuttleworth, is a bloke at home who is just an ordinary bloke doing ordinary things. And yet he's got, not somehow, an audience hmm. who tunes in to listen to what he's doing with his sandpaper and his other things. And that, you know, I'm going to just assume that YouTube was started around 2007 or something like that, right? So he's five years ahead of that whole thing as well. Mm. And it's just a guy doing a 15-minute, we'll call it a YouTube video, and doing his everyday life stuff, and he's doing the ASMR as well. 
Like he's totally nailing it, man. Yeah. He was completely ahead of his time. Yeah. Why? Why he's not so you know, ahead a of superstar the superstar at this point? I don't know. But this is that got <laughs> me thinking Kibixi's something else. Yeah. <laughs> singing songs about <laughs> paintbrushes, but that would go the, the go song. down well. Hmm. I was wondering why I enjoyed this stuff so much. Not to make it all about me, but just taking elements of the show, and I realised it all goes back to listening to Neil's heavy concept album as a mm. youngster over and over and over again because there's a little bit of chat and Neil will find himself in some place and then that'll lead onto a relevant song and then he finds himself in another place and does another thing and leads onto another oh, song. We could do a whole episode about that album. Oh, wow. You really could. So I think that, that explains why I found this to be highly entertaining and you pack it all into 15 minutes and you can put it on for your commute to work and have a really good chuckle before you get to work and arrive there feeling fantastic. Mm. So, um, yes, I shall let you put your case before we take this to its inevitable <clears throat> conclusion. So, in summary, uh, so this is gentle, observational humour driven by a character and we laugh at John not so much at his quiet life or his aspiration to musical greatness but at his quiet life and its inconsequential complications which inspire his music. Um, so we've got a whole song about having two margarines open at the same time, yeah. which he's doing his head in. Uh, the songs are ridiculously catchy, and he's also a likable, innocent character who can be forceful at times in his own way, but uh, unaware of some of the things that are going on around him. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I just think it's a, he's a fantastic character. Yeah. Whose songs are catchy and makes you laugh. Yeah, it does. I laughed several, oh, I'd say dozens of times during that, you know, so on a laugh per minute ratio, that'd be three per minute, which is pretty darn good. I don't know if we've ever looked at a sitcom, which is funny because it's exploring the mundane aspects of someone's life. Oh. Not that he thinks it's mundane. No. He thinks it's all exciting. Yeah, painting is... the the window frame. Yeah. So should we keep an eye out for that from now on? Oh, we can do. Well, when we find it, then we'll probably realise there's a, there's a whole subgenre out there of all this sort of stuff. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, so that's where I got to. That's my great plug for for this episode. Yeah. So you're going to ask what the you, question? What do you think? Yeah. So I I'd be very happy to put the Shuttleworths into the Hall of Fame, and I can see myself tracking this down ASAP and listening to it all. Oh, good. Yeah. It's all out there for free. And then what about albums, if people wanted to do that? Are they does there are released? Albums. Yeah. Yep. Quite a few, I think. Well, look, I, I think it's good that you've brought along audio, which is something I've often wanted to do, and you've done it. Yeah, we can branch out works. into a new area now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be really good. So jolly well done. You've introduced me to something that's really fun and shown tremendously good taste, and you've oh, absolutely oh, read oh. me like a book here. Uh, no, no, this is, it's a great, uh, fun listen, I say. And you're right. He is a great character and the songs are really good. Mm. Yeah. If you like that, there's plenty of other good episodes. There's one about an eBay auction for a toaster. <laughs> Tale of a toaster, that's a real corker. Oh. So next month. Mm, Christmas uh, time. Christmas coming up. Have you already made your selections, Steve? No, I have not. Nor have I. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Enjoyed that. Yeah. And uh, listeners, we'll see you in a fortnight-ish. Cheers. Okay, bye. Join us next time on Sitcom Showdown when we'll be putting another five-star episode under the microscope. And in the meantime, you can contact us with feedback on Facebook, Twitter at Sitcom Showdown, or by email at sitcomshowdown at gmail.com. 